Hi, this is Summer with Summer's Tips and Stitches, and today is going to be the third part of the video series, if you will, that I've been doing on making this baby blanket. The first one is when I showed you how to do the thermal stitch. The second video, I showed you how to do this twisty fun border. And in this third video, I'm going to show you the way I deal with my ends. Um, I know of a few different ways to do ends. The first one is something that I can't show you, and that is called like the Russian join. Um, I'll put a link in the description box below uh, to a YouTube video where someone explains how to do the Russian join. Um, sadly, I've not been able to figure it out, and I've never been able to do it myself. Another way to deal with ends is weaving them in. And uh, in a few moments, I'll show you how to do that. Another way is to um, sew or is to uh, crochet over your ends and I will show you how to do that. And then my preferred method is to sew in your ends. So in just a moment I'll pause this video and I will show you up close and personal, up close, uh, how to do the three different ways that I mentioned. Okay, I'm back and I'm going to show you how to crochet over your ends. So what you would do is, and I'm showing you with two different colors just to um, make it more visible for you, but I lay my ends over the top of where I'm working. Let me try to focus a little better. There you go. And I'm going to do a half double crochet, so I'm going to crochet up to two chains right there and then I'm going to come around and crochet like normal but try to make sure that that end is laying on top of my work and that my hook goes over it. So that is the way to crochet over your ends. Now I highly recommend if you're going to do this method to have at least a six inch um, tail. Um, I have done this before and I did not like the results because the end was always poking up. Um, but this is just a nice way to quickly get your ends weaved in. That's what it looks like on this side. That's what it looks like on that side. And as you can see, you know, this is just a little swatch I'm doing. There's still some tail end here. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and show you the weaving in method. Okay, I'm back and what I'm going to show you right now is a way of, you know, weaving in your ends. I'm going to use a darning needle and for this method you just take your needle, thread it, and just weave it in and out of some already crocheted work. Now Mikey on the crochet crowd recommends going back and forth two to three times so that it doesn't come out. There we go. One, like I said, you can use a darning needle. Another tool I bought that I've seen at Hobby Lobby's and Joann's, so I'm sure it's at Michael's or any other craft show, is this little tool. It's pokey on each side and it has an open slit. This is nice if you're about to weave in the ends for a really small end piece. Or if you're just not really great at threading yarn through needles. Um, because it is open all the way across you can slide it. And you know it's basically the same thing where you poke, you take this end and you poke it through and then you just pull it bam so there it is and like I said because it's um, you know you can slide it through if you have just a little tail end you know there you go so this is a way to weave in your ends you can use a darning needle or one of these little tools these tools come in a multi kit with two or th I think three of them of different sizes small medium and large the final way that I'm going to show you is on the blanket that I've been working on, the one that I've been sharing with you guys step by step, and that is my thermal stitch baby blanket with the twisty border. 
and I think I'm gonna have to move my camera back a little for this and that method is to sew it in um, to sew in the ends so so I thread my needle and basically similar to that of weaving in I actually sew in and out of each of my stitches the reason I do this is because I think it makes it more sturdy it's less likely, least likely to weave its way out and I go in multiple directions and actually in and through the yarn. Um, it's a really a great way to work in a variegated yarn um, because you can't really see it as much as you can tell and I feel like it's very secure and I've never had any problems with my ends coming out. So that is the third method uh, to sew in your ends. The final thing that you should do when sewing in your ends is give your yarn a little bit of a tug, cut it, and then give it a little wiggle afterwards. And there you go. You have no end poking out. And you also cannot see where I traveled through my stitches. So those were the methods I've talked about. The Russian join, which I will link in the description below. Weaving or crocheting over your ends, weaving in your ends, and then sewing in them in. And like I said, my preferred method is sewing them in. I'm gonna pause this video. I'm gonna lay out my finished blanket so that you can see how this how great this beauty looks. And then I'm going to finish up with a little bit of chit chat and a new knitting pattern that I'm going to try. Okay, so this is my finished baby blanket. This is the thermal stitch with Karen Simply Soft paint colorway Rainbow Bright with the twisty border. It measures 27 inches from here to here and 39 inches this way. I'll get a little close up so you can see the border and the stitch. I really love this blanket and as you can see it's a nice closed stitch there's not a lot of holes so I believe this is perfect for a baby or a young child to cuddle up in or lay on and play. Okay so I'm gonna pause the video one more time and then I'll do a little bit more chatting with you. Okay so I'm here to finish up the video with a little chit chat. Um, first, I will. I thought I'd show you what I got at Joann's. I didn't want to do like a video, you know, like Joann's haul, because to be honest, this is barely a haul. But I did pick up a new set of knitting needles. Um, I think I got these for three fifty because Joann's had a coupon for fifty percent off of one regular priced item. These are Susan Bates size six, twenty nine inches, and in a moment I'll show you why I needed one of these. But also, if you see this before um, April 30th, Joann's currently has Karen Simply Soft 2 for 5. So because I really love that rainbow bright blanket that I just finished up, I'm going to make another one. I'm going to use um, Karen Simply Soft Ombre in the, I believe this is called Teal Zeal. I bought two more. I have two up there. And that blanket takes four skeins of yarn to do the thermal stitch in that dimension. And then, to be honest, um, it only takes a partial skein, not even half, to do the border. So then I picked up this because I felt like this really went well with the two, the painted ombre, or the ombre one. So I'm going to use that for the twisty border. And I think I'm actually just going to do this solid. I'm going to do a row of single crochet a row of half double crochet and then I'm going to do both rows in the twisty. And then just for the heck of it because it was two for five and I guess because I was wearing blue today I picked up this soft blue. I'm thinking about starting an Etsy store and making baby sweaters um, because I love making baby sweaters and apparently the charity I've been donating to is uh, full with <laughs> baby sweaters so I thought you know what maybe I'll make them um, put a couple up on Etsy and just see how that goes. Uh, so I bought this, to a nice, I think it's like periwinkle, I lied, very blue. So finally, the last thing I'm going to mention, which is why I bought these knitting needles, is I'm going to do this pattern called Easy Goes It by Finicky Creations. 
Now, I don't know if any of you have heard of, I think it's Randy's Ramblings. She had mentioned a shawl that she had made, and that just got me searching for shawls. I don't really know why. And I found this one. And um, I'm going to hold it up. I don't know if, can you see this well in the, the camera? I got it on Ravelry. It was free. It's designed by Michelle Higgins. And it looks like it's pretty, pretty decent, easy pattern. The only thing that I had to look up in it that was new to me was a slip one K wise or a slip one stitch knit wise. Um, otherwise, I know pearls, I know knit, I know KFB as a knit into the front and back of the stitch and knit two together. So I'm going to give it a go. It has a real, it's a really odd shaped um, scarf. Can you see that? Yeah. And um, my son's helping me with my camera work today. Yeah. And uh, I think it'll be fun. So this might take me a hundred years because knitting is very slow for me. And uh, the yarn, let me quick grab, show you what I'm going to use it in, is this uh, Deborah Norville wool. Um, it's kind of got pinks and purples and grays, a mauve. And so that is what I'm making that shawl in. So keep your eyes peeled for, you know, some progress on that. Hopefully it goes well. Tonight I need to soak my knitting needles. Um, I really like the needle part of the Susan Bates, but I don't like as much the circular plastic. And a few folks have mentioned to me to soak them in hot water. So that is what I'll do tonight. Otherwise, that's all. Thanks for thanks so much for watching and commenting. I really have been enjoying um, responding to everyone's comments on my YouTube videos, and I'm really excited about that blanket, and I can't wait to make another. Um, that's about it for today. Uh, I'll be chatting with you too soon in a future 500 subscriber giveaway. So those of you that missed the, miss the 50, keep your eyes open. There'll be a specific video just about 500 subscribers. And that's where you'll enter to win a really nice yarn prize. Alright, uh, that's all for tonight. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting.